Hey guys, this is Austin. Is the Nintendo Switch Lite worth it? This is an all new Switch which cuts the price down to $200, which is a fairly significant cut over the $300 current Switch. However, to get to that $200 price, they've had to make some sacrifices. Now in a lot of ways, the Switch Lite is actually more of a successor to the 3DS as well as the 2DS XL. At around the same price, there are a lot of similarities. However, the Switch of course is a much, much more powerful console. However, it's also portable only, just like the 3DS is. For context, the Switch Lite is about the same price as the new 3DS line, which is interesting because of course this is their standard portable console. Now when you put the Switch Lite side by side with the standard Switch, one of the major advantages is really that price. At $300, the Switch pretty much doesn't really get sales or price cuts, so by saving a full hundred dollars, I think it is going to be a very compelling deal for a lot of people as long as you can put up with some of the compromises. This is a light version in pretty much every sense of the word. Not only do you have a smaller 5.5 inch screen compared to the 6.2 inch display on the main switch, but you also lose the backwards compatibility with Joy-Cons. Is that backwards compatibility? The compatibility in the first place? So of course one of the major advantages with the switch is you can slide up your Joy-Cons, you can swap them out with different colors. However, when it comes to the Switch Lite, this is a fixed single unit, which is nice for rigidity, but it is not nice for being able to, I don't know, play in tabletop mode, because this doesn't have a kickstand either. Or play with your friends. Friends? Who, who has friends? Along with this, you are losing a couple of the functions of the Joy-Cons, including HD rumble as well as the IR support. Although, to give the Switch Lite a little bit of credit, it now does have a full D-pad as opposed to weird, like, four buttons that never really made sense unless you split the Joy-Cons apart. And you know what? I actually give this some real credit. Because it is now a single unibody design as opposed to having the Joy-Cons, it actually feels a lot more sturdy. Now, this certainly wasn't a huge issue with the original Switch, but because the Joy-Cons were on rails, especially as the Switch got older, it did have a little bit of flex in it, whereas this actually does feel like a very solid unit. An absolute unit, says the, uh, the kids would say. As the kids would say? As the kids would say. Look, I'm trying to say an absolute unit as I'm holding a turquoise, like, baby switch right now. It's really hard to do this with a straight face. <laughs> it's an absolute unit, guys! Oh boy! The Switch Lite does still use a USB-C port, however, looks can be deceiving, as this is only purely for power. So the Switch Lite doesn't come with a dock, of course it doesn't come with the Joy-Cons, and because of that you have no way of connecting this to a TV, even if you were able to hook up something like a third party dock. Now that's kind of a, a bit of a shame, I mean I get that this is a portable console, and when you think about it like that it's not so bad, but compared to the standard Switch, you're losing a lot of functionality. I mean you literally have to use this as like the, the pocket switch. Now even though the Switch Lite doesn't come with Joy-Cons, you actually can still pair Joy-Cons that are of course sold separately. Now because there's no kickstand, you kind of have to find something to prop it up on, but normal Joy-Cons do work just fine. However, what doesn't work just fine are, say, the SNES controllers that you can buy from Nintendo Online, which are cool except that you have to use it like this, or Nintendo Labo doesn't also work. Basically, you should just use it as a Switch Lite in portable mode, not in Joy-Con mode. Or alternatively, I'm sure there's going to be a wonderful range of accessories that will give you a kickstand and all kinds of other great fun things for your Switch Lite. That's actually something I kind of miss, because like the Switch, like the, the kickstand on the Switch is not very good, but it actually is properly usable. Whereas this, like, I like the form factor in handheld mode, but when I actually want to sit it down, I mean, it's, it's annoying to have to like try to find something to prop it up on. It doesn't really feel like quite that, that same kind of portable experience, even when you do have a couple of Joy-Cons or something like a Pro Controller paired. Now at this point, you might just be thinking that this is a worse Switch. However, it's not quite that simple. So first of all, you do have colors. Yes, colors are a feature. So not only do you have this blue turquoise color, but you also have a little bit of a yellow color. And by a little bit, I mean a lot bit. And there's also this special edition gray Pokemon version. However, beyond just the pure colors, what I like about this hardware is that it feels not only nice and small, I feel like this is a little bit of a better form factor for portable play, but more importantly, it feels more durable. I know I was kind of talking about like, the Joy-Con stuff, but even beyond that, you have to consider that this is probably the Switch to get for like kids or people who are upgrading the 3DS who maybe aren't the uh, most careful in the world. Now yes, you still have the exposed screen, you're probably gonna still scratch it up and whatnot, but because this is all this matte plastic and it feels relatively sturdy, I do think this will hold up better than the current Switch has. And when you put the Switch Lite side by side with its bigger brother, the first thing I notice is that even though this is a smaller screen, it is the exact same 720p resolution, which means that technically this is actually a little bit sharper, with a 267 ppi versus 236. 
Now the sharpness isn't a massive difference, although it does look a little bit crisper. But something else I notice here is that this seems to be, to my eyes, slightly more color accurate. While, whereas the my original launch switch is a little bit on the cooler side, the switch light seems to be a little bit warmer and they're fairly close on brightness. So if you're worried about sort of making sacrifices by going with the switch light on the screen, I honestly think this is actually a better experience. I find that the bezels look a little bit smaller on the switch light, mostly because, well, they are smaller, but they're also body colored. However, something that I thought was going to be a bigger downgrade, but actually isn't, are the speakers. So on the standard switch, you have two front firing speakers which are facing directly towards you, whereas with the switch light, they're kind of on the bottom. However, they actually seem to be sort of oriented towards you, and it is actually very hard to cover these. Honestly, it actually doesn't really sound all that much worse than the bigger brother. For $100 less, at this point, the switch light is looking fairly straightforward, right? I mean, you've got pretty much everything from the main switch except for the Joy-Cons as well as the TV mode, but in exchange, 100 bucks, not a bad discount. And something I think is really easy to overlook is that for $200, you were getting a fairly powerful console. There are so many excellent games that of course not only have been moved over from the Wii U, but are straight up like exclusives on the Switch such as Astral Chain. You've got tons and tons of multi-platform games such as like Fortnite and Minecraft. I mean, this is a properly powerful little console. When you put it side by side with something like the 3DS, it is not even a comparison. This is so much better. The screen is a world better, man. I, I just played the 3DS for the first time in like a year. I forgot how terrible it was. I mean, at 200 bucks, especially when you put it in a vacuum, this seems like a really solid little game console. Terrible now compared to what this Well, okay, the 3DS never had a good screen, but the Switch, is. this is a legitimately good screen. Right? Like, it's not quite as sharp as, say, like a new iPhone or Galaxy or something, but it is a very good screen. When you look at it side by side with 3DS, yeah, that's a, that's a difference. <laughs> now, battery life on the Switch Lite is an advantage over the standard Switch, although only kind of. So if you caught a video we did last month on the brand new secret Redbox Switch, even though it looks the same on the outside, it actually has dramatically better battery life at around six hours. Whereas this guy is right in the middle at four, and the original Switch is only at three hours. Is that the new PSP? I'll see myself out. John Renger, ladies and gentlemen. Both the Switch Lite as well as the Redbox Switch have an upgraded NVIDIA Tegra processor, which while they don't run any faster, so you're not going to get better performance, what you do get is a much more efficient processor. So on the Redbox Switch, because it has a larger battery, you're getting those huge, huge battery gains. However, because the Switch Lite is a smaller console, it does have a slightly smaller battery. Still though, if you're coming from an original Switch, you are going to get at least somewhat better battery life on the Lite. In a world where the Switch Lite exists and the Redbox doesn't, I mean, you're getting something which is of course fully portable, but importantly, it does have better battery life. But as soon as you realize that for $100 more, the Redbox Switch not only has significantly better battery life, but it does have all the other advantages of a full-blown switch, including the Joy-Cons and the docking and everything. It makes this a little bit of a harder sell. I mean, when you have a fully portable switch that doesn't have as good a battery life as a normal switch, kind of, uh, I don't know, I mean, it doesn't make it irrelevant, but it makes it a little bit disappointing, I think. But of course, the real question here is, is the Switch Lite worth it? Well, if you already have a switch, no, it is definitely not. The red box is better in pretty much every way, and the upcoming Switch Pro will likely be a much, much bigger upgrade. Really, where the Switch Lite shines is that it is a full fat experience as long as you're okay with dealing with a portable only console. I think for a lot of people, that makes sense. Personally, I like playing the Switch in portable mode a lot. And the fact that this is smaller and so much cheaper, I think will mean it will be a huge, huge seller for Nintendo. It's just not quite for everyone.